occupational and physical therapy interventions in pediatric chronic pain, chronic regional pain syndrome by Ms. Kimberly Bullard, OT. I'm the occupational therapist and at the Pediatric Pain Treatment Center at Boston Children's Hospital, and I'm also the clinical manager for occupational and physical therapy in the Pain Rehabilitation Center. Today I'll be talking about interventions that primarily arise from the literature and treatment for children and adolescents with chronic regional pain syndrome. Chronic regional pain syndrome. You might be more familiar with this condition known as reflex sympathetic dystrophy. The clinical diagnosis for chronic regional pain syndrome is pain disproportionate to the inciting event, reported symptoms in three out of four of the following, sensory, vasomotor, pseudomotor, and motor and trophic changes. Also having the fact that no other diagnosis better explains these signs and symptoms. I'm going to briefly review the changes that occur in patients with chronic regional pain syndrome. Regardless of the cause of the pain, whether it be an orthopedic injury, a sprain, a break, headache, or abdominal pain, patients present with generalized deconditioning. Decreased range of motion, trophic changes, decreased strength, and decreased endurance. Sensory changes occur, such as allodynia, where the normal receptors become pain receptors. The patients may also present with hyperalgesia, where typical pain or noxious stimuli are amplified. Patients frequently describe paresthesias, reduced discrimination, and reduced proprioception, which is the awareness of joint position and movement. And in patients with headaches, they present with increased sensitivity to light and or sounds. Paresthesias are often described as pins and needles, stabbing, numbness, etc. Reduced sensory discrimination is when the patient has difficulty experiencing hot and cold, uh, sharp and dull, and other sensations. Reduced proprioception results in the patient not being able to know where they're moving through space. And then I mentioned hypersensitivity to light or sounds. The vasor motor changes that we see are changes in color and or skin temperature. Frequently, we see modeling. We see redness uh, on the affected body part. We also see the, the limb may be warmer or colder to touch, and it may be different on the affected side of the body. The pseudomotor changes that we see consist of edema, which is the most frequent symptom that is seen in children with chronic pain, and or sweating of the extremity. Physical interventions. So physical and occupational therapy intervention for children with chronic pain addresses the biological changes that occur in the presence of chronic pain and supports the psychosocial interventions by engaging children in functional activities. So the goals for physical management of chronic pain are to regain strength and endurance and sensory tolerance, to replace an image of illness with one of wellness, and to promote independence with self-management and return to full participation in daily activities. In the Pain Rehabilitation Center at Children's Hospital, the philosophy that is being used is one of increasing activity. When dealing with acute pain, rest and decreasing activity is the typical recommendation. In chronic pain, there's a cycle of disability that Karen discussed earlier, and the studies have shown that increasing the activity level of the patient is most beneficial. The strategies that we use are move it and use it, desensitization and distraction, and function returns before pain goes away. There's another philosophy that, that uh, we talk about with our pediatric patients, and that is the concept of hurt versus harm. So we oftentimes need to educate the patient and the family that even though it hurts, we're not causing increased harm to the body by doing these activities. So one of our rehabilitation strategies is 
we use physical exercise to increase strength, range of motion, and endurance. The move it and use it concept. Because of fear of further injury, many of the pediatric patients that we see have not been moving or using their extremity. That's why physical exercise is so important. We also know that exercise increases a sense of well-being and is essential for overall health. If a client has sensory issues that contribute to the fear of movement, then occupational therapy is involved and we educate the patient in using their ex affected extremity and that's called desensitization. We are trying to improve the tolerance for, for the sensations that can no longer be tolerated due to the chronic pain. Oftentimes when a patient hasn't been using their limb, then they don't have the normal sensation and we need to uh, re-educate and they need to, to experience graded sensory activities since the nervous system has been sensitized and there's actually been changes in the brain, as Karen discussed. I try to build the sensory to the tolerance to sensations gradually. Some examples of this might be uh, wearing shoes, wearing different socks, going from wearing ankle socks to knee socks. Uh, oftentimes, patients come in not wearing a shoe or a sock not wearing gloves, wearing only short-sleeved clothing because they're sensitive or to that clothing on their arm or, or their leg. Uh, it may feel, this is when they may describe it as uh, tingling or uncomfortable. And so we ne need to gradually expose them to that so that, that we can regain function. All the exercises in the world are useless if the patient can't participate in functional activities. So a big part of the rehabilitation process is retraining in functional activities. This may consist of, of getting up and down from the floor, walking, running, doing stairs, functioning in um, activities of daily living, such as brushing your, your teeth in standing, taking a shower in standing, or wearing a backpack uh, are some of the functional activities that we ask our clients to experience. Another rehabilitation strategy that occupational therapy is using is sensory-based coping strategies. Karen talked a lot about uh, coping strategies that our psychologists teach. Well, the occupational therapists here at Children's are teaching children how to recognize the sensory needs that they have in their body and therefore using sensory coping strategies. These strategies may th consist of squeezing a stress ball which provides proprioceptive input. It may be using a vibrating massager that provides another kind of sensory input. While we talk about using uh, music we can work with our clients around what type of music is calming and relieves the stress and ha have them practice those techniques during their therapy session. Another rehabilitation strategy is using a mirror box. Many sites, including ours, are using imagery where the patient uh, puts their arm or leg in their, their affected arm or leg in a box so they can't see it and on the other side is a mirror and they move their affected extremity. They, they'll see that image in, in the mirror. That will send information to the brain and studies are showing that we can actually change uh, the perception. And I've seen patients who just by moving their non-affected extremity will start moving their affected extremity. That's in the box that they're not even looking at. Aquatic therapy is another way of providing low impact movement against resistance. It also is a way to reduce pain because you can control the temperature of the water, which in our setting is warm. We also have a current 
in our pool that we can set at different speeds so our clients can do many things in the water that they're not yet ready to do on land. From an occupational therapy standpoint and a sensory standpoint, it's also a great desensitization tool, especially since patients need to take showers before they go into the pool. Back to the biopsychosocial model that Karen talked about, we practice using active coping strategies during physical and occupational therapy. So for example, a patient might be working on a desensitization activity, such as participating in contrast baths, where they put their foot or their arm in, in warm water for a while and then cold, cold water for a while. And we will encourage them to participate in playing a card game or a table game as a form of distraction to help this activity be a little bit easier and to decrease the focus from their pain. Ergonomics and body mechanics are another important technique that patients with chronic pain are taught. They need to be taught the proper ways to move their body, to bend, to reach, to even carry a backpack. When children or adults have chronic pain, their pain can be exacerbated by poor movement patterns. Another important part of pain treatment and rehabilitation is the development of management plans. There are three kinds of management plans that we're using. One is a pain management plan, two is a sensory management plan, and three is a school or sports management plan. It's important for patients and their families to know how to manage their pain or a pain flare when they go home. So the physical therapists oftentimes develop these plans in conjunction with the patient and then throughout the course of their rehabilitation, we practice those strategies uh, when, uh, they, when they need to be practiced during the course of therapy or when the patient is at, at home. The pain management strate strategies and plan allow the patient uh, a way of having a formalized method for using coping strategies, for using the strategies that they've been taught. Their plans often consist of the move it and use it strategy. It may consist of any modality, such as using uh, TENS or uh, hot packs, cold packs, things like that. So in conclusion, Chronic pain is complex and subjective. There are biological, psychological, and social factors that contribute to pain and disability. Cognitive behavioral therapy is an effective psychological treatment for children and adolescents with chronic pain. ACT is a promising new psychological treatment for pediatric chronic pain and physical and occupational therapy can help the child and family regain function and return to full participation in all their daily life tasks. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.